This video will discuss how we go about thinking about the particle in a box model system in three dimensions and quantum mechanics in multiple dimensions in general. So in three dimensions, we're trying again to solve the Schrodinger equation, but now our wave function is going to be a function of x, y, and z, and our Hamiltonian is also going to work in the x, y, and z dimensions. So we're going to have a particle in a box model system, so we'll still have a box. It has dimensions Lx in the x direction, Ly in the y direction, Lz in the z direction for each of its lengths. The potential energy is still zero anywhere inside this box, and it's infinity anywhere outside this box. So the particle can be anywhere inside this three-dimensional uh, box, but it cannot be outside of it. So we have minus h bar squared over 2m, our Hamiltonian operator. But now, instead of first derivative with respect to x being our kinetic energy operator acting on the wave function, we have second partial derivative with respect to x plus second partial derivative with respect to y plus second partial derivative with respect to e or z. All of those acting on the wave function equals the total energy times the wave function. That's our new eigenvalue equation, our Schrodinger equation in three dimensions. Um, in three dimensions, typically, we don't want to be writing out all of this in parentheses here. It's quite cumbersome to write. So what we use is a shorthand operator called del squared, which is, or the Laplacian operator, which is a shorthand for second derivative with respect to each spatial dimension. So x, y, and z adding them together. So minus h bar squared over 2m del squared psi equals e psi is our 3D Schrodinger equation. In each dimension we have 0 is less than x, y, or z which is less than the length of the box in that dimension. So our boundary conditions are going to be that psi of 0 for all values of yz and psi of lx for all values of yz equals 0 y and z being all real numbers of y and z. Similar thing for y, similar thing for z, we have boundary conditions with respect to each individual dimension. So what we're going to do to solve this is our favorite trick whenever we have a partial differential equation. In this course, there will be two options. We'll either do separation of variables or we won't solve it. So we're going to do separation of variables because separation of variables works in this case. So we're going to assume our wave function is a product of three wave functions. Each of those functions are functions of one dimension. And when we do this, our energy is going to be a sum of the energies from each of these individual dimensions, x, y, and z. Again, this expression here being called separation of variables. So when we do this, we have a Hamiltonian in the x, y, and z direction, and our equation separates out into three separate Schrodinger equations, one for each dimension. Minus h bar squared over 2m, second derivative with respect to x, times the function equals e x times that function. And we know the solution to this in one dimension is that the x function with respect to the quantum number nx equals normalization constant ax times sine nx pi x over lx. The same works out for y and the same works out for z. There's no special treatment for x. y and z work the same way. Now our normalization condition is that the integral from 0 to lx, 0 to ly, 0 to lz of psi star of xyz times psi of xyz this is now our probability dimension, probability density function in three dimensions. So psi star psi is still the same. We're just integrating over three dimensions now. The probability that the particle is at this specific location, integrated all over all locations, should equal 100% or a probability of 1. So this means that our normalization constants, ax, ay, and az, the product of which is our total normalization constant, are going to be the normalization constants from each of these individual dimensions, square root of 2 over Lx, square root of 2 over Ly, square root of 2 over Lz. Product of all three, three of those is the square root of 8 over Lx, Ly, Lz. So now our total wave function 
is the product of those three. It's our normalization constant times sine in each dimension, sine nx pi x over lx, sine ny pi y over ly, times sine nz pi times z over lz. And now our energy is a sum of the energy from each of these three dimensions, from each of these three individual Schrodinger equations in one dimension. It's h squared over 8 times the mass of the particle, and then from each dimension, quantum number squared over length of the box in that dimension squared.